Shannon. I am the director and costume designer at Woodstown High School. This year we did Cinderella and I got a lot of good feedback on her transformation costume so I wanted to do a little tutorial and show you how we did it. This is Cinderella's first look. She had a kerchief, a separate bodice, there's a green overskirt with ribbons attached to it and her lower skirt is separate because she needs to be able to take that off. I made sure to find a pattern that had a strap here that would separate, that'll be important later on, and a full sleeve so that we could hide her ball gown underneath of it. When I first started researching this, I watched dozens of clips online and dissected them, slowed them down to try to figure out the best way to do this. Um, my first thought was that the dress was, the ball gown was actually part of the reveal, but it turns out that you can use any ball gown you want to, and you just need to build the reveal, the ribbed dress, to be able to cover it up. So that's what I did. I made a second bodice which is over here. So these are the pieces of the bodice that I made to match the bodice that she's currently wearing. It's separated into two pieces. This is the front, it matches exactly. And the back has the sleeve attached in one piece. Everywhere where it has to be fastened together, I put satin cording and a loop pattern on the bottom of the sleeve, under the, underneath the arm also has a loop pattern and the strap where it joins the front also gets the satin cording. And this is how it gets fastened together. I made pulls out of just a plain plastic ring and fishing line. This particular one has to have two lengths of fishing line because they'll both go up the side together and then when it gets to the underarm one of them is going to go out underneath the sleeve and the other one is going to cut across and do the strap where it joins. So in order to join them together, we just start with both pieces and carefully loop it through in a zigzag pattern through the satin cording. So now I'm at the top of the side seam. Just gonna pull that taut so that the ring is still exposed at the bottom. Then I'm gonna separate the pieces. I'm gonna fold my sleeve and continue with just one side of the fishing line in the same pattern underneath the sleeve. So now I go back and I take the other piece of fishing line from the side seam. I'm gonna take it straight across and fasten here. You'll notice that the sleeve doesn't get attached here. You could potentially put satin cording here and on the other side of the sleeve to match it up, but we found that it didn't make a difference. So there's only four loops on this side. And then once, we do that, we'll take it apart at the zipper, open it up flat, and do the other side. So once you're done, you have the pulls all threaded through, make sure you turn your sleeves back right side out. And the bodice should look just like her original. So when Cinderella left the stage during the prince's giving a ball, we had we have a double cast. So we had the off Cinderella helping her change, plus another costume girl and another off character. Um, the first thing that had to happen were these alligator clips pulled off of the bodice. There were four, two in the front, two in the back. That lets this green overskirt down, which she is wearing inside out. This bodice unzips in the back, and that comes off. We had another girl helping her get into her ball gown, which I purchased on eBay for $25. back. So once she has her ball gown on, we fold
fold it up the front. While someone else put her bodice on. This is the rigged bodice. And hold that in place. Then this green underskirt, which she's wearing inside out, folds up over top of that. This underskirt, I have weighted with old curtain weights that I had taken out a long time ago. So that makes it heavy. And it's also split in one section to make sure that it's gonna fall easily. So we tried to keep it flat in the front to avoid her looking like a donut. Um, in the back, we rolled the sides backwards toward the center and then folded this up in half, which also gets tucked up under her bodice with the green overskirt hiding it. So there's a moment when Cinderella comes off during the next scene, and during that moment, we would grab the alligator clips that are attached to the right side of the green underskirt. They go up and over and attach at the sides and help to carry some of the weight of the ball gown. Also, when the dress gets released, they will be holding the bodice underneath her ball gown so that there's nothing left on the stage. There's two more in the back. They get attached as far to the side as they can go. I would suggest making them in a different color so that they're easier to find in the dark and during the scene change, the dress change. Um, it was always difficult for us to find where they are. And now she is ready to go out and do the next scene. She has to be a little bit careful when she's underdressed so that she doesn't accidentally pull one of the fishing lines and they start to reveal the dress underneath. It's a little bit fuller than she was dressed in her original outfit. However, we don't think it's as noticeable um, unless you're looking for it. So when the actual reveal actually came, she would reach down and make sure she could find the fishing line. She would look for the pull on each side. She would start spinning during the cue and the music. The centripetal force of the spinning actually helps release the dress and pull it down better than it will pull when I'm just standing here. But she releases on the big cord. Both strings pull this way. The bodice is attached and falls down in the back and in the front. The green dress, the centripetal force pulls this away from her and it falls down and the ball gown is on the top. And that was her reveal. In the second act, Cinderella has to transform into a gold dress. This one has a lot of tricks to it because her sister Gabrielle needs to wear it first. So I made a separate bodice, finished bodice for Gabrielle. And then I made Cinderella's bodice in the same way I made her first act costume with satin cording hot loops on the sides. And the strap, I didn't have to do the sleeve because they get torn off in the scene before. So I just made a finished seam, seam with a little bit of Velcro on the top that matches up to the Velcro on her dress. Velcro is great for that because the ripping sound sounds like it's actually being torn. So each night we would put this together. The poles for this dress only have to be a single wire, single fishing line, because they only need to do the strap at the top. So I'm gonna put this together and then we'll show you the second reveal. So when Cinderella was getting ready for this change, she had on her underslip, or her, I think she wore bloomers in the scene, and a set of pocket hoops, which are under here, to give it some fullness on the sides. Plus, we're gonna see her after the mother stepmother rips off her skirt, so we wanted it to look period underneath. Um, this is her rigged bodice, one on the top. And this skirt kind of gets gathered up in a similar way, but we didn't use an underskirt because we thought that the underside of this dress looked like it could be her under things. So this was Cinderella's look for the second act. She would come out, the stepmother would tell her she should be in rags, and she would pull this sleeve off, she should be in rags, and then this is a wraparound where she could just grab these beads and pull, and Cinderella 
would slide out of it and spin around to reveal her bloomers and body hoops. She would then begin the song this way. Once the fairy godmother came in and did the reveal again, she would throw up all the pieces that stepmother had pulled off of her to cause a distraction. And while they were in the air, Cinderella would spin around, pull both of her rings again. These pieces could land on the floor this time because there was a lot of other things on the floor and the dress would reveal. So thanks for watching. Um, thanks to my daughter for filming this and editing the video. If you have any questions, you can email me at shannon at shannonsheridan.com. And good luck with your projects. I can't wait to see your reveals.